this episode of Café de René has been brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped, the number one choice for men's below-the-belt grooming. Featuring the new and improved Lawnmower 4.0 with a built-in LED light, ceramic blade for a closer cut, and also completely waterproof. To get that, but also including the rest of the package, including your ball deodorant, t-shirt, free boxes, weed whacker, please head over to manscaped.com, use the code CAFE, not only will you get all that, you will also get free shipping and also 20% off. So yep, please head over to Manscaped, use the code CAFE and your balls will thank you. Bonjour, welcome to another edition of Café de René. I am the third wheel, James Dunstall, joined but once again by the star of the show, Mr. René Dupree. René, who's your passenger this week? Oh my God, he is the one, the only, my brother from a Cajun mother, the <laughs> red dog, Rodney Mack. What's going on, dog? Hey, my friend, what's going on, man? Long time, brother, long time. Wow, yeah, so, uh, so I've been doing this out of boredom. I just call up. So my old friends in the locker room that I haven't seen, like for you, I haven't seen you. Well, no, I saw you in New York a few years ago. Right, right. Just in passing, but we never really get a chance to talk, right? So here's a chance to just shoot the shit and see what see what you're up to. And So where are you now? Are you down in Texas or in Louisiana? Yes, San Antonio, man. San Antonio. San Antonio. We and live- I hear you got a badass wrestling school, right? Yeah, we're doing pretty good, man. Yeah, we're pretty successful. Uh been here a couple of years now. Um, the school is about a year old. And that's yeah. the Dog Pound Dojo. Right, right. Yeah. This location here is about a year old. Yeah. So and and we've been doing we've been blessed, man. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. Uh, out of San Antonio. So you're obviously the head trainer along with your beautiful wife Jazz. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you two are the only two trainers? Yes, yes. From the Rosa? Uh, and the Rose is still with you, brother. She gone? No, she's gone. She was there uh, for a short time, and then when she got signed with AEW, her uh, yeah, she just chose to you know to to, to hang that part up because she didn't really have much time. Right, right. Yeah. Well, if you're in the San Antonio area, I highly recommend because, like, I tell like when I do seminars and stuff. It's like pro wrestling is like kind of like building a house. You can have a beautiful mansion, you know, uh, but if your foundation is rotten, that that's just going to f- crumble. You so you got to learn your foundation, your basic wrestling before you start learning all the high spots and the fancy maneuvers, you know. And right. if you want to learn from the ground up, I mean, uh, Jazz and Ronnie, they are wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thank no, you. No. There's a lot coming from you because you're yeah. not just saying that, Renee, because you're here. But, and I think that's why we clicked off so well because everybody knows your background as well about being old school. And, yeah, and as soon as you and I just, I mean, made eye contact, we damn near was, we were good. Yeah, I remember uh-huh. that, man. And, uh, well, it's probably because the same f- f- familiar foundation. Oh yeah, I mean the first time I met Ronnie, I'm not. I'll be honest with you. The first time I met Ronnie was at the old Davis Arena, and I was intimidated because here's this big dude, full, you know, he, t- he had the chains, he had the eyebrow rings. I was like, holy Christ! <laughs> then you were chewing tobacco, and I chewed tobacco. <laughs> 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 okay, so there's a connection there. Then I found out you're Cajun French, just like me. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> big old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait, but, wait, uh, yeah. No, uh, I remember being in the ring with, with, with Red Dog down in OVW, and it's like I said, man, he had he had the old school foundation, and I just wish you would, oh, like in my dad's territory up here in the uh, Maritimes. Right. Oh, my God, you would have been huge because you could have brought you in as a big-time heel, right? And then as soon as we do an angle, right, and you maybe you ran in to save the baby face and you got on that microphone and started talking French, holy fuck. 
fucking buildings would be packed. Well, God. Well, well, I know, man. I kind of, I kind of wish I was back in that era as well, though. You know. Yeah. Well, everything changes, but uh, so other than that, man, what's been going on for the past 15, 20 years? Oh man, just uh, always been, you know, still always in it. Um, I never really stopped wrestling. Yep. Uh, just, just been, yeah, just been hanging in there, surviving, and uh, things really clicked off these last three or four years moving here to San Antonio. Yeah, yeah f- for us, yeah. Just in Louisiana, it's just you know, there's it's just no work. Is you it know, that bad? Companies, right? Yeah, it's bad, and then now, especially at this time, oh. with the pandemic going right, it's it's yeah. Um, but but yes, wrestling is so plentiful in Texas, in uh, San Antonio. We uh, love it here, man. Yeah. It. yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I could get down there, but ah well, the borders don't What's don't. The, what's the status of SWE Sherry now, everyone? Is it gone under, or is it just on hiatus? Oh, man, that's a good question. I know we we're no longer. I still see that uh, Charlie Hoss carries the. Uh, the SW title, so yeah. I'm guessing some kind of way it's still, you know, it's, it's still alive. Mm. But um, for for the most part, uh, I think yeah, Charlie's working with the world class. I think maybe maybe they have a deal, world class championship wrestling, uh, with Jerry Bostic, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, the SWE is that like a case of too many generals and not enough soldiers? Or I'm I'm not I'm be honest with you, we still asked each other what, what happened there. I mean, everything was going pretty pretty good. And then yeah. just all of a sudden it, it just pulled out, you know. Um, <laughs> just, a, lot of, a, a lot of people said um when, when uh what, what's her name? Lacey came in. Uh, That's pretty much when it right. <laughs> Shit hit the fan. But uh as far as for, you know, everybody was I mean, everything was good. Right. Yeah, and then just like, what the, f- what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, your dog pound dojo, do you, so you, it's a school, is it bad? Do you run shows as well? Yes. Um. And yeah, we, we've ran about, I think, four shows. Uh, th- this one coming up Saturday, oh. January 29th, is going to, Teddy Long is actually the vice president of Dog Pound Championship Wrestling. Okay. So, Teddy's going to be there as well. And he's gonna. It's it's the first ever Teddy Long Tag Team Tournament Classic. So uh, we're having a tag team tournament, and he'll be there to present the uh, the titles. Oh wow! So what kind of guys you got in? What's some of the names? Can you? Oh, uh, the OMGs, um, who who uh, were the SWE Tag Team Champions. I think they're the world class um, tag team champions, and uh, they're, they're they come from the dog pound. Matter of fact, we are. Uh, they graduated with us, or what I say, finished up with us about 10, 12 years ago, maybe a little. Wow. But uh, yes, and then Booker has a guy, a uh, tag team out of uh, Fly Def. Uh, there's there's a group of the Russell Twins. Uh, yes, a group out of uh, a Lions Pride, uh, which is down here by Brian's, Brian, Texas. There, yeah, there, there's quite a few pretty good young tag teams and that's what I was trying to get a, a lot of guys the young guys um from around the area and uh give them something you know to to compete for okay so let's talk about might as well talk about your WWE career so uh you debuted I think the same same year as I did in 2003 right yes sir yes sir and that was with Teddy oh uh, right Right. Oh uh, well, I didn't debut with Teddy. My, I was on SmackDown first. Ah. Uh, um, right. Cena and I were, were were running doing a, a tag called the Untouchables. Uh, okay. Yeah, and then uh, got a call from Paul E. I think it was, and, and and told me that they were looking at me to bring me over because the deal with uh, D'Lo Brown and Teddy Long was a uh, right. Right. It wasn't going well, so or they were about done with that or whatever. But uh, I remember, man, I remember that, that raw. It was like they kicked the shit out of D'Lo and then they fired him. <laughs> right. I thought we were, we were going to be working together, really, man. And believing that, yeah. Oh. So me and me and D'Lo were talking about getting shit together, and 
what we're going to do in this and that. And we got God there and it's like, oh, fuck. Right. That yeah. quick. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. I feel James, that. James, you got any questions? Yeah, uh, I was really enjoying your run with uh, Dorinsky and you defeated um, Dudley's on the, the Bad Blood pay-per-view uh, 2003. <laughs> Uh, what was like teaming with Nowinski? Oh, it was great, man. Nowinski is a good guy. I had a blast with him. Um, that was kind of odd, though. You know the whole the whole storyline deal. But um, yeah, uh, Nowinski, man, he's he's a great guy. I I love working with him. Uh, he's good people, man. And he was other good run as well because uh, they give you like a bit of a undefeated streak till you came up against uh, Goldberg. Was that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Renee's not a big fan of Goldberg. <laughs> really? Did you get out alive? Because I got I got a separate collarbone for working with him. Really? <laughs> yeah, man, it was real quick. Yeah, real yeah, quick, right? Real quick. Mine was quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you you and him didn't uh, didn't go well. Oh, uh, what happened was we did a backstage vignette. It was with me, Rob, and Sly. And then he, you know, was like the USA, USA, and he grabbed our flag, and he, we did five takes, and he hit me across the, the shoulder each time, right, right here where you call it next. Right. Oh yeah. But dude, he hit me so hard, like three or four times in a row, to where it fucking actually detached my collarbone. Damn. Wow. I, I had to go because I was living in Louisville. We had a, a team doctor there. We had to go get like cortisone shot. Right. Just way too much. Yeah. But you know, cortisone, man, like long term, it's more harm than good, right? Right. It just right. eats at your joints, right? So like now right. I still have problems with it. Right. right. I hear you, man. Yeah, dang. So let's talk about um how's your body holding up? Let's talk about some of your injuries that you had. Oh, uh, you know, it, it was uh it, it was kind of rough on me, man, for uh but these last three about about four years ago, I really my sciatica. And my, 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 yeah, it was bad. I could barely walk. Well, really, I couldn't walk for while I was on crutches. I was out. I lost a lot of weight. And uh, I was, yeah, they, they had um, said I was like 100% pretty much disabled. Jeez. But, yeah, man. So I, I went back to the, you know, to the gym and started straight. I couldn't stand up. I couldn't sit down. I was literally screaming. And uh, I had to go to the emergency room. But I just started going back to the gym, man, and started working out slowly and yeah. stretching, and that did it. That did that, it? Yeah, that did it. So I just started you know, trying to, you know, work out as heavy as I could, strength training again. And, uh, and man, I, I promise I feel better than I did 10 years ago. Really? You look yeah, great, so, man. Yeah, well, I appreciate it, man. But, yeah. yeah. So, so um, let's talk about, like, um, we, we were together <laughs> – <laughs> on the fake ECW, remember? <laughs> yeah, the fake ECW. <laughs> what was your opinions of that? Oh, uh, I really don't it? have too many because I didn't. I, I it, it wasn't. It just wasn't the same, you know. Right. Yeah, I, I really didn't consider it like ECW. Right. Oh, uh, no, and that didn't last long. Oh, well, you right. remember the houses? How bad they were. All right, that didn't last. So I think they brought me in, and three or four weeks later, six weeks later. Right, right, it was gone. Because yeah. I remember you were working with Brad Armstrong, right, on those house shows? Right, right, wow. right. What that a was, good guy, huh? Oh, my God, yes. I worked with Brad, and I remember Balls, had a few matches with, you know. I'm, I'm not sure, uh, maybe Kevin Thorne. Okay. Yeah. I had to work with, with Sandman, and he gave me the drunken, uh, was it the drunken Frankenstein or the drunken, uh, <laughs> drunken something, yeah. anyway. Drunk he fucked me up. Or something like that, right? <laughs> oh, God. I remember riding with you. Thank God I was riding with you, because I was complaining the whole time. I had somebody to fucking complain to. I forgot about that. That's right, man. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And you and I started rolling together a little bit. Yep. Yeah. 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 That was fun. Good times, yes, sir. But uh, uh, you were with the original ECW, and I, I, I actually watched one of your shoot interviews. You and Jazz, you did it together. Man, you you really paid your dues there, because, I mean, you were on yeah. the way like a year and a half, right? Right, right. Well, yeah, 
yeah, it, it was a while before I ever had a dark match or or whatever, you know, just to try out, just just a match the in general. Right. Yeah. So and everybody you, else just walked through the door, just yeah, just came right through their head match, man. Oh it was, my it was God. Tough. Must have ate at you, right? What was that? It must have ate. It at you inside. Oh, yes, yes, it did. You know, and the first thing come to mind, want, you know, wanted to leave and quit, but I just couldn't. I just couldn't let him. Right. I wasn't going to let him break me, you know. Right. But you persevered, yeah. man. So yeah. you were with them till the end? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, that, that last pay-per-view that they did, uh, with Jazz and I were with them. They just called us and asked and told us not to come in because uh, it, it was, yeah. Yeah, we were with him till the end. Till the end. And then how long after that did you get signed with the WWE? Well, Paul looked out for us, man. Uh, I, I don't I, I think maybe I don't know. I don't want I don't want to allow him the time, but maybe maybe a year. A year yeah. After, yeah, well, it, it Jazz got the call to go to OVW. Right. And then, uh, it went on from there, right? Yeah, cuz they shut uh, ECW shut in 2001 and then you were already in OVW by 2002. Right. Because right. you were tagged up originally with Shelton Benjamin, right? Oh, uh, well, when, when I, yeah, that was the first guy I came in there with. But uh, at first, Shelton and uh, and Brock were tagging. Okay. Right when I got there. And then uh, it was like maybe six weeks or so before I even, maybe six weeks or eight weeks before I even had a match there. Because oh. really, they didn't bring Jazz asked me to come th come through. Okay. They, bring me in. they they hadn't brought me in. Okay. Jazz, uh, right. Did that. So I just went in and Jim, excuse me, Jimmy didn't have anything for me at the time because he didn't know I was coming in there. So I just still stayed there and just went to OVW, went to practice and kind of just worked my way in there. Yeah. 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 But I was there for a couple of months watching. Um, it was Cincinnati also was coming there, Les Thatcher's group. Yes. And they were working in it. Right. Right. So I would sit there and watch those guys. And uh and then afterwards I of course OVW as well. So Right. Yeah. So um what was it like tagging with Shelton? Did you guys have good chemistry? Yes, man. Um well first of all, you gotta know Shelton's a great, a great guy, a great human being. Oh. Gets along with everybody and anybody. And, and uh so that that's real easy. And then being, you know, he's a great athlete as well. Oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, one of the best I've ever stepped foot in the ring with. Um, oh my God, yeah. But one thing yeah. about Shelton, one thing about Shelton, man. You know, I work out hard, right? And I watch my diet and all this shit. That guy never goes to the gym. Can eat Pringles, yeah. potato chips, and fucking Pringles and, and shit, and look twice as good as us. It's not fair. What well, was it? Pringles and Kit Kats and Mountain right. Dew. Right. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, the freak. But yeah, yeah, great guy. I miss I miss working with Shelton, man. Against him and with him. You know, I had some good time. We had good matches against each other and of yeah. course the chemistry together. Yeah. The dog and cat deal. <laughs> right, because they called him the cat. Because he was yeah. agile like a cat, right? Yeah, buddy. It was barricades, man. It was black barricades at Raw and SmackDown, you know. But if he would right. just walk, walk, and just hop right over him. Like, no no effort yeah. at all. Unbelievable. I mean, so, he jump on the ropes backwards. Right? Oh, ropes backwards. Backwards. Fucking unreal. So, uh, well, there's a story here. I was present for this. If you want to edit it out, you don't want to talk about it, it's fine. But it was the, the house show at Raw. You know what I'm talking about with Shane Helms? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's all good. We don't have to talk. You want to talk about it? Because I was oh, there. Yeah, it's all good, man. So, okay. So, we're all around. I, I was tagging with, uh, it was me and Slyer, me and Conway. And we're backstage at a Raw. And uh, Dog was working with Hurricane. Something happened in the match. And, you know, like uh, the way I describe Ronnie, he's the nicest, laid back, nicest guy in the world, but he's like a pit bull, man. You fucking tease that motherfucker or pinch him too hard, he will snap your head off. And <laughs> Hurricane felt it that night. What was the situation? <clears throat> well, I, if I remember correctly, it, it was it, it all happened before the match. You know, we we're going over the match, and um, I think it, it started about 
he wanted to bump me, you know, he wanted to bump me pretty much early in the match. And of course, it, it was me and Mark, but I'm the smaller guy. And uh, him, him being the smaller guy on his side, um, he wanted to bump me a bunch. And, and my whole deal was, well, if I do bump a bunch for you, then what am I going to do for Rosie? And Rosie gets in there as well. You know, I don't mind doing it, but the whole character deal and trying to hold, you know, some uh, still still having some some uh, value to my character, if you know what I mean. Right. My, yeah, I'm supposed to be this, you know, who I was thugging and bugging and no disrespect to him, but him, his character being what it was, a comic book character. Right. Right. So, and that was kind of the whole situation. And uh, so we had a disagreement before the match. And uh, I went over to tell Orn that, uh, as a matter of fact, this was going on and we were up the second match or third match and, and the match one was on. So Orn was the agent and Orn goes, um, so uh, Mac, you guys are good. You got your match together. I said, oh, it's all good. We don't really have a match together because we're having this misunderstanding. And as I was explaining to him about Hurricane, Hurricane passed by and I think he, he made a, hit my hand or something or said what? something. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, okay. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, we don't have it together, but I'm a professional. I can call it in the ring. That's and it. He, he might have called me a pussy or something. I think so, but it was a little just right. And so I was like, okay, it's all good. So when we got to the ring, I remember Mark Henry was like, calm down, Debo, because he used to call me Debo. You know, I was, <laughs> he said, calm down, Debo. I was like, it's all good. I'll be professional, man. So we had the match, and I was. I was professional. I did what they asked me to do. And then when we got out of the ring and I walked straight to the back, I was on fire. So I went to the, I was hot as hell. As soon as we got through the curtains, man, I called him in the back, you know. Right. And we found this little dressing room area. So I was like, um, oh, yeah, I shut the door. And I was like, so tell me, man, you still got the same set of balls now that you had earlier? Because, yeah, that's what it was. I think he slapped my hand because I was talking to Owen and I was pointing like this. Right. And he passed and slapped my hand down. So I was like, okay. But anyway, I go, you still got those same set of balls that you had then. And I don't know, he said something or whatnot, and then that's when. Oh. So, yeah. yeah. So, all, I remember going to the training room, and I mean, you, you fucked him up because he was bleeding profusely from his face and head. Yeah. Yeah, it was a. <laughs> well, that's the thing, man. Like, when I was there, I was young and very, you know. You know, not trying to bother anybody, but in reality, you got to stand up for yourself, and you got to, you know what I mean? Yeah, you do. Well, it's, right. Uh, keep it professional, yeah. but don't let yourself get walked on by people, because then you're gonna be used as a doormat. So fuck them, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But needless to say, after that happened, man, he, me, and him, uh, we tight, we cool. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good to hear. You know, yeah, that we good, man. But yeah, you guys good good. Good for him. right? Wow. So jazz, jazz is doing okay? Kids are okay? Yes, yes, man, we're blessed. Jazz is doing good. Of course, you know, she just retired from in-ring work, but she stays real busy, uh, especially at the school. Yeah. Helping, uh, yeah. Yeah, so and the girls. The, the girls not how old are they? Uh, 13. They're just Jeez, and 13, Christ. right, right. It's like, you, uh, you remember uh, Mark Gingerak's little boy, Marcus? Yes. He's 21 now, dude. Oh my, oh, my God. I remember yeah. seeing this, this fucking thing. I was 21. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, Jazz was doing some stuff for Impact Wrestling. Yes, yes. I'm surprised she didn't hire on as an agent. She, You you and her. Jesus, you guys would be perfect for that. Yeah, well, appreciate it, man. Uh, well, actually, now she's with NWA. She's oh, an agent. With the NWA. As an agent? Yeah. Yeah. She did is. you do some stuff with them too? I just, yes, I did a little deal with them a couple months ago and uh looked like I'll be I'll be going back with them as well. Fuck yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's fuck. That's like an OVW alumni right there, right? Yes, yeah, it is. Oh my God, the locker room is, is like you just said it, man. I walk, I was like, damn, I'm home. <laughs> Here we go, yeah, Jack's Dane, and the list goes on. 
Right. Yes, everybody, yeah. Oh man, everybody. And I turned around and was like, family. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Nothing worse, need, man. You're walking. Need to get you there, Renee. Huh? I said we need to get you there. It's the NWA. Oh, I, I got it. Oh, uh, I said that. Yes, I said that, man. I've been talking him up all the time. I was like, man, you got yeah. Renee's a great in the ring, man. Oh my God, I love. He's a great guy, but I mean, the damn, the, just the chemistry we had in that old school, and that's the NWA, man. I know. Be right at home, bro. They, they, they only run maybe every three, four months. Is that it? I think it's the uh, Well, they just, uh, there's a deal, but I think they, they're open another division and there's some more stuff coming up. So they'll be, they'll be running more. Oh, well, yeah. you never know. You never know. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, fuck, I'm glad you're doing so well. You got a great, again, Dog Pound Dojo in San Antonio, Texas. If, you, if you're looking to get into the wrestling business, uh, I give my, highly recommend Jazz and Ronnie because they are old school wrestling. And the most important thing in learning the business, the wrestling business, is having a solid foundation. You got you to gotta crawl before you walk and walk before you run. And that's the place to go if you're in that area wanting to get into wrestling. And then, so I mean, that, and that's Renee. You're so right. We we that's what we do. We teach the fundamentals yep. and, and and the foundation of pro wrestling. And we we barely teach. I mean, big moves or whatnot. And I always tell them when that time comes, you'll come to me and say, "Hey, coach, can we yada yada?" But I let them evolve into that. Yeah. You know, I mean, we teach them how to bump, of course, and all that good stuff, but. I'm mainly teaching them the foundation and the fundamentals and how to storytell and call it in the ring. Yes. You know, school stuff, man, right? Taking your time and and, and learn first wrestle. That's it. Into a spot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, instead of ever, you, you know what I mean, but yeah. So a lot of our, what we do is I teach them, you know, with my wrestling background from high school and elementary, I teach them how to wrestle. That's and, it. And, Right, and then we go from the ground and whatnot, and I teach them pro wrestling. Yeah. And then, of course, working that, and then the storytelling. But as far as for the, the big bumps and all that, now nah, I let them tell me when they're ready for that. That's it. That stuff. Yeah. That's it. Like um, when my dad trained me, the first thing he told me was the most important thing in wrestling is timing. You got to make sure you have solid timing because, you know, once you make sure your timing is perfect, then you can do all the big moves and all that stuff. The timing. Right. Right. Yeah. right. We, we teach that, which comes, what I always tell them is the foot positioning. I mean, footwork is, is, is the key to timing because then if, you be in a, if your foot footwork is right, you'll be in the right place at the right time. That's so it. therefore, That's it it. Has no, timing has nothing to do with speed. No, 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 no. That's right. And they got, you know, woman, woman, it's like, no, whoa, whoa, it's not. <laughs> I mean, pro, uh, proper timing can mean the difference between getting out of the ring in one piece or leaving the ring in a wheelchair. Yes, sir. It can yes, be a sir. serious thing, man. Serious yeah, thing. Exactly. Oh, the simplest thing. That's yeah. it. James, you got anything? Um, yeah. Uh, big fan of Teddy Long. I, I was imagining he's quite a character behind the scenes there. Uh, got a fun Teddy Long story. Oh, man, honestly, I don't really have that, like, many funny Teddy Long stories I, uh, other than uh, when it comes time to eating, man. You know, we, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we used to always get on Teddy to go, man, man it's time to go, Teddy. We got to eat. You know, we, I used to trap me and Jazz and Mark Henry and Teddy Long. And, man, we, you know, Teddy could get away with just a little snack or some shit. But, uh... I we, heard... <laughs> I heard he's one of the most frugal men in the business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. He wasn't down with stopping and eating and getting to the room. No, he, no man. That, that was the biggest thing. Teddy trying to get to the room. Okay. So he wasn't interested in, uh, in spending any money. Well, you got to respect him. No, not at all. But at the time, I mean, I understand. Jazz right. used to get on me because I spent my money all on food. Raw. I'm talking about it. Fuck. <laughs> Every two exits, I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what was great traveling with Mark, because Mark knew all the spots. Right. Oh, my God, yes. He knew all the restaurants. And then, you know, like when you're in those areas and, and, and there's nowhere to eat, 
He always knew what it was. Yeah. He had the best man in the alley. He knew where all the food was, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, this was a great conversation. Uh, let's let's uh, tell people where they can find you, how to connect with you, and if they want to go train with you, how to get how to reach out. Yes, man. Um, my myself, you get. Uh, I'm always on Facebook, Rodney Bagno, um, and also Dog Pound Championship Wrestling dot com uh, and TSW Plus. Um, and also dogpounddojo.com. So that's where, if you, right. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Well, Rodney, I just want to tell you, man, you you are my brother from a Cajun mother. And uh, some of my best memories in OVW was definitely with you and hanging yes. out with you and Jazz because you guys were just good people, man. I hope nothing for the, but the best for you. And uh, hopefully we can see each other again, maybe share the ring again, okay? Yeah, same here, man. Love you, bro. Love you and, too, brother. Uh, Hope to see you soon, man. All right, man. Take care of yourself. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.